Bitcoin has just broken over 40,000 US dollars. Will this be the start of a continuation to 48k or will we see a rejection? Furthermore, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a particular indicator which is flashing a buy signal for the first time in over 2,000 days. Let's go ahead and jump into the charts. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Bitcoin from a macro and short-term perspective, discussing the recent breakout and retest of $40,000. Will we see a short-term rejection? What does this retest mean? Is it the start of a macro continuation to 48k and everything in between? Alongside that, we're going to be taking a look at a particular indicator on the 14-day chart, which is printing a buy signal for the first time in over 2,000 days. Before we get into it, smash that like button, hit that con button, and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos on Bitcoin focusing on the facts, the data, the technical and structural information, and the relevant economic news. No hype, no BS, no emotion, pure raw ta if that is the kind of content you're interested in join us on telegram it is the third link down below you will get access to charts updates videos educational posts news events and everything you need to stay in the loop of cryptocurrency with bitcoin and the relevant economic news if you are interested in trading join our vip group we post trading setups with exact entries exact targets exact stop losses trade justification exclusive analysis and so so much more you'll also get access to our group chats our general chat our trading china education chat our daily video chat our trade setup chat our help chat and of course our news chat if you're interested in getting access to all of that go ahead and contact me in the pinned comment of the free channel for more information let's go ahead guys and dive in and like we said in the intro today's video is going to be a very very interesting one so starting on that market data 24 hour volume is up 1.22%. This is sitting at a total of 79 uh, billion. Looking at the 24 hour liquidations, we are down 16%, sitting at a whopping 107 million still. So, still relatively high. Taking a deeper look at those liquidations, we can see over the last 24 hours, 66 million came from shorts and 40 million came from long. So, a relatively clean split. Um, particularly in the situation of such a large move. What it does tell us is it tells us a lot of people at this particular point here were expecting Bitcoin to actually correct as it did appear to be exhausting. However, we do see a continuation upwards, actually liquidating a lot of shorts and of course pushing to 40 Thousand. So we discussed that in yesterday's video. Moving back to the data, taking a look at the, liquid, uh, the volatility, the 30-day is still pushing sideways and the 60-day is, of course, still pushing sideways. So not all that much change here on the volatility index. Moving over to the DXY, we can see the DXY is attempting to break down again or at least retesting this current base of support. If we do see a breakdown, we are expecting a continuation downwards to 101. This will be very, very bullish for the stock market and for and for cryptocurrency again if we do bounce from here we could potentially see the 50 but most likely we're going to see the converging point between the downtrend and the horizontal base of support or should i say resistance at around 105 to 105.5 that would be the bounce target now, overall, we are in a downtrend and therefore the directional continuation is more likely to end up moving towards this lower level of support, provided we do lose this current base of support, then a break toward the upside. If, however, at any point in the future, we break above this downtrending diagonal resistance, we will then see a continuation upwards. However, at the moment, the downward move is more likely. Moving over, the S&P 500 has just broken above 
this downtrending diagonal resistance. It is on the weekly chart over here. We would like to see a weekly candle close above this downtrending diagonal resistance. Of course, the downtrending diagonal resistance marks the diagonal resistance from the all-time high and retest in July, establishing the current trend. And then we have at our third, third retest and potential breakout. If we do break out of this downtrend, we are expecting a continuation up to retest that all time high, potentially following suit of what the Dow Jones is doing. And the Dow Jones's chart is very, very similar. We have seen that respective downtrending trend line. We have had that second point to validate the trend. And then we have seen that third point breakout, looking for a continuation to our highs. Overall, these charts remain very bullish provided the price is able to maintain this diagonal resistance. If we fail to break above, or should I say, if we fail to hold above this diagonal resistance, that is when we'll be entering a downtrend once more. Moving over to Bitcoin, guys. So before we get into Bitcoin, a quick word from BitGet and BingX, and then we'll jump into the charts. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss the two exchanges we use on this channel, BitGet and Bing X. So which exchange should you sign up to? If you look to the right hand side of the screen, you're gonna see the list of differences in relation to KYC requirements and the countries these exchanges offer services to. The first link down below being the BitGet link and the second link down below being the Bing X link. No matter which link you sign up to, you're going to get up to 15% discounts on your trading fees, up to 5,000 US dollars in trading rewards, and of course, you'll get access to every single MegaWow exclusive bonus campaign we run on these exchanges. Alongside that, BitGet and BingX are incredibly similar. They are both ranked top 10 in terms of trading volume. They both have extensive liquidity pools and market pairs offering up to 125x leverage. And most importantly, they both offer protection funds for the users to protect you against any third party hacks. So get started now and support the channel by clicking the links below. Thanks for listening. So Bitcoin, so much is going on, so much important stuff to discuss. And we're going to be just taking a look at that short term price action today, going over absolutely everything from the technicals to the structural levels to what is happening, why it's significant. We're going to be going over the daily charts, discussing the higher time frame resistance zones, what biases you should have at the moment and how you should be viewing the current charts. And we'll also be taking a look at the macro monthly charts and most importantly, the Gaussian channel on the 14 day chart as we're about to close a fortnightly candle above the Gaussian channel upper band, breaking through for the first time, guys, ever since 2016. This is absolutely massive, according to, our, of course, uh, our, our bull run and, of course, the macro trajectory of price action. So let's go ahead, guys, and jump into the chart, starting on Bitcoin. So as we know, Bitcoin is retesting the major, major area of resistance, which is a 38 to $40,000 resistance. You can see the $38,000 to $40,000 resistance marked out on this daily chart according to this red box. If we go down to a smaller time frame chart, you can see the $38,000 to $40,000 resistance is going to be the distance between the 40 k level, which is the horizontal black line, and the 38 k level, which is this dotted horizontal line. So the distance between is going to be that high time frame level of resistance, the $38,000 to $40,000 k resistance so let's talk about the 38 to 40k resistance why it is important what it means for the price action and of course the potential future outlook based on potential breakouts or rejections from this level so first and foremost we do have to go over something we did yesterday which was defining the significance of these levels in terms of the overall trend so first and foremost, we can go ahead and say this is our 32K level. Our 32 to 30.6 is going to be our high time frame level of resistance, which is now a support, right? This is a support, which facilitates the macro uptrend. So let's go ahead and type that out. That is going to be our macro uptrend support. Okay. That is our macro uptrend support. Then moving upwards, we have got our next area of major resistance. This is going to be the 48K resistance. This is going to be the macro bull run trigger point, okay? Meaning if we break above this level, we technically enter a bull run. 
Now, the reason we enter a bull run was uh, explained in depth in yesterday's video. A real quick brief explanation is based on our structural monthly levels. Every single time we see a monthly candle close above the dead cap bounce high of the prior cycle, uh, which is reflected as this dollar trend line. In this instance, it is 48,000. We end up seeing the price enter a bull run. So we saw the breakout over here. We'll go ahead and circle it. We saw the break of the monthly close right over here. We saw the break of the monthly close right over here. And in both instances, that was a monthly close above the respective dotted trend line, which resulted in the initiation of a full blown bull run for Bitcoin. So in this instance, we can actually label that level, that 48k level as a macro bull run trigger point. We have a macro bull run trigger point and we have our macro uptrend support. So the area between that level is going to be the major area of horizontal resistance marked out. Again, if we draw a parallel channel, again, we naturally would not assume this is by no means a parallel channel. So just really quickly, this is by no means a parallel channel. All I am drawing this in is to show you the mid range between this upper level of resistance and this lower level of support. That is all we've got this in here to describe the mid range. As you can see, the mid range is sitting around about $40,000 which is where this high time frame level of resi resistance actually is. So we do know 38 to 40K is the midline, okay, the midline of resistance between the 32K major support and the 48K major resistance, meaning it is going to act as a directional trigger point. What does that even mean? Well, a directional macro trigger point is a price point on the chart where if broken, okay, or if rejected from, will determine the next macro directional move for Bitcoin going into the coming months. So this is a very, very important level for Bitcoin to determine potentially the next two months or maybe even three months of price action for Bitcoin. Breaking above 40,000 will break this trigger point toward the upside, facilitating a directional move to $48,000. Now, of course, this will not happen overnight, but it will likely occur and play out. However, a break below 38,000 could facilitate a correction for Bitcoin, retesting potentially as low as 32,000. So a very important level for Bitcoin, and we're discussing potential directions for Bitcoin on the short-term analysis. Before we get into that, we do need to take a look at our VRPV. So we zoom out into our visible range over here. We can see something very, very interesting. What we can see is, according to our visible range volume profile, which is this orange and blue thing on the side, for those of you who aren't aware, we can see it significantly drops off. What does that mean? It means we are seeing a decrease in the VRPV range as the price action or the price range pushes higher. That signifies there is actually significantly less resistance for Bitcoin as it moves from 40,000 to around about 46,000 in comparison to the actual support below from 38 to 32. Meaning, the challenge we had from moving to 32 to 38, okay, is was a greater challenge than we would likely face moving from 40 to 46. Something to keep in mind. Let's go ahead and talk about short-term price action because it is very, very relevant. So first and foremost, guys, we have to talk about, I guess, how this plays into the higher time frame charts and how you can look at this and kind of prepare for the next move. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and change this. This is no longer our bullish breakout target because we actually reached that level, right? We were telling you guys for weeks, this was an upward accumulation. We had bullish absorption. Yes, there was exhaustion on the higher time frame. Yes, we should pay attention to that. Yes, we should be cautious of that for corrections. However, while the uptrend is a uptrend, while the price is moving upwards and bearish, uh, and bearish momentum is being absorbed, meaning the, the momentum is starting to turn around as the price action is creating higher highs, that actually signifies we are in a bullish 
accumulation pattern. And of course, the pattern that we were in was an ascending triangle pattern. And the ascending triangle pattern eventually broke toward the upside. Again, a lot of people are saying, well, you're incorrect. We're in a rising wedge. We just didn't have the validated structure yet. Remember, we can have developing structures, but until we actually validate that structure, I use a five point retest method. Again, I've described that before. It's my personal method I use to validate structures. We didn't have the proper validation for a rising wedge. However, we did have the proper validation for an ascending triangle. Plus we had the uptrend, which would indicate to us we're more likely to move toward the upside. So we have seen a breakout to 40,000. What we would like to see now to validate the actual break above 40,000 is going to be a weekly candle close above 40,000 and more importantly, a retest of that point. So we take a look, we actually just closed the weekly candle. We closed the weekly candle at $39,970. So we do have now another seven days to actually see whether or not this level of 38 to 40 will hold as a support. Remember, provided we actually keep above 38K on the weekly chart, that is okay, as this whole level between 38 to 40 is an area of resistance, and therefore it is only worrisome if we lose the lower range, which is 38,000. Moving back to the smaller time frame chart, guys. Let's take a look. The 38K level is going to be our high time frame support and bearish trigger. The 40K level is going to be our bullish trigger for a continuation. I will add a weekly close. So we'll go weekly WC, weekly close. A weekly close above 40,000 will strengthen and actually flip the range of resistance between 30 to 40, the 38 to 40 resistance, into a support. If we change this 38 to 40 area into a support, that facilitates a strong base of support for Bitcoin to establish a continuation upwards to 48,000. So we do need that weekly close. Again, on the short term, if we do break above the 40,000 level, where could we potentially see Bitcoin go? Let's go ahead and bring out a measured move analysis. We take the low of the of the triangle, the higher the triangle applied to the breakout point, we could potentially see around 4,000, 41,600 as a target for Bitcoin on the short term if we do continue upwards. So that is a short term, guys. We're looking for a weekly close above 40,000 to actually convert the 38 to 40K resistance into a support. Once it has converted into a support, we then have a greater probability uh, to actually see a continuation to retest that $40,000 level. How about the bearish scenario? Like we said already, the bears are not in control. We will likely see exhaustion play out as the price pushes higher, but unless that exhaustion actually facilitates a correction, should I say a breakdown of the uptrend or a loss of strength of the bulls, it is unlikely for it to actually result in much. So, when will we be worried for a correction? If we see 38k lost, that will be the bearish trigger for a continuation towards the fake out low, which is sitting at 36k. So for any point we see 38k lost, okay, and not just a wick under, we want to see, you know, four hour close on, I know we want to see the uptrending level actually lost as well, so something like that across of that point then we'll be expecting a correction down to 36,000. Upon the loss of 38 and retest of 36, we would have lost the high time frame level of support at 38K, and that would be a bearish trigger for a directional continuation likely downwards. Where we'll be expecting next, we are looking for the dollar trend line at 33.3. We lose that dollar trend line, which is a bearish trigger. We're then going to fill that VRPV gap, pushing down to 30,600. So you can see, we take it layer by layer, level by level, zone by zone. We'll wait for these trigger points to indicate the direction has shifted and then change your position to match the likely direction of the trend. You should not be front running a correction at the moment. Now we are at 40,000. 40,000 is a major resistance. If you want to take a short over here and you want to keep a very tight stop loss, by all means, knock yourself out. Just make sure you are very well aware of the risk as there is no guarantee 40,000 40, is going to hold as a resistance, uh, but you can try that if you will. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the macro charts now, guys. So this indicator, the Gaussian channel, 
Very interesting indicator. Uh, whew, it's, it's a fantastic indicator at predicting the macro directional shifts. So there's actually two things I want to talk about on the monthly chart. If we overlay the Bollinger Bands, okay, the Bollinger Bands with the Gaussian Channel, we are looking at two particular things. Number one, we are looking at a shift of the midline of the Bollinger Bands with the mid uh, with the midline of the Gaussian Channel. So we'll go ahead and point that with a yellow line right over here. We'll go ahead and pinpoint that again with a yellow line right over here. And we'll go ahead and pinpoint it again with a yellow line right over here. We do have to note that we did see the COVID-19 crash over here. This was again a black swan event. So excluding this, what we can say from historical price action, when we see the Bollinger Band midline cross through the Gaussian Channel midline, the price action enters from that point onwards a macro uptrend which eventually facilitates a bull run and does not result in a bear market again until the Bollinger Band upper band, okay, the, sorry, the Bollinger Band midline crosses back through the base of the, should I say, the midline of the uh, Gaussian channel. Sorry, absolute mouthful which marks the absolute bottom for Bitcoin. So we'll go ahead and show you, okay? We have the start or beginning phase of the bull run. That remains when the Bollinger Band midline crosses the midline of the Gaussian channel. And then we have the bottom, okay, the bottom of Bitcoin in the bear market when the Bollinger Band midline crosses back below the midline of the Gaussian channel. Sorry, absolute mouthful on that one, guys. So many midline words to uh, process. So, very interesting indicator, guys. Keep your eyes on that. But looking at the Gaussian channel separately, what we can see is... For the first time since like all the way back over here, which is 2016, May 2016, we have seen a two-week candle close above the, Ga uh, the Gaussian Channel upper band, particularly the red Gaussian Channel upper band. The last time we saw that, we saw a continuation upwards, the, uh, which basically started that bull run, right? It started the bull run, it continued all the way for like two years above the Gaussian channel, only then to enter a bear market when we broke back under it. So this is definitely something we should be paying attention to, guys, as we have just closed above this level. According to historical price action, that is a significantly bullish trigger. So definitely pay attention, definitely watch that develop, guys. I know I will be, and I suggest you do the same. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. We'll catch you guys in the video tomorrow. Cheers.